We're pleased to welcome Robert Garrigus into the interview room, our 54-hole leader at the RBC Canadian Open. Can you talk about your round? Yeah, it's uh, kind of started off a little slow, and then I hit a perfect tee shot on uh, the par five and stuff that hit it a couple feet, made eagle, and started swing swinging really well. Um, got my distances dialed in and made a couple long putts. We got one on uh, nine and 11 and 12. Uh, those are really hard putts to make. Um, and it was just, you know, it was a fun day. I had fun with Willie and, and uh, Scott, and, you know, we kind of fed off each other, and it was kind of a little lull there, but uh, I think our best ball was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have questions. Go ahead, Chris. Robert, uh, you've established a 54-hole scoring record of this tournament that uh, wiped out Arnold Palmer's mark from 1955. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Arnie. <laughs> I mean, did, what does that say about the, the course this week? I guess, obviously, your mindset going tomorrow will be you've got to make a lot more birdies. Yeah, you know, and the soft conditions. The course is getting a hair firmer. Uh, not not too much, but it's it's... It's getting a little firmer. I mean, that three iron I hit on 18 went 290 yards. Uh, we weren't expecting that, but uh, you know, the course is soft. Um, and I've been leaving myself a, a tremendous amount of opportunities on the golf course to shoot low scores. Um, and that, you know, that doesn't happen very often. So I'm um, taking advantage of it. And uh, you know, every, everything's going well this week and I need it to go well tomorrow too. This is just three days. Um, you know, a lot of guys haven't been able to hold on to the lead this year and it's tough. You know, it's that final round pressure. You know, everything's going through your head. You're, you know, you're all in the spotlight and the guys behind you are trying to get you. So um, it's going to be tough to, to block that out. But, you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. So having said what you just said, Robert, what's the mentality tomorrow? What, what do you do? You, do you go out there in a, in a bit of a defensive mode or do you just go, go nuts? Well, and that's the thing. Today, I, I, I'm going to be patient tomorrow. And when I have a green light, I better make a good swing because that's when, you know, the good things are going to happen. Um, you know, today the first three holes, I kind of didn't have, I didn't, I had one green light and I kind of hit it long and, um, you know, I'm going to have to go out and make birdies tomorrow. I think I'm going to have to get to 21 under par, which is crazy to say at this golf course in a, in a national open. Um, but that's the way the course is playing. And hopefully, uh, you know, if I can get out and, you know, get off to a good start on the front nine, uh, you know, you never know how low I can go or, you know, I just need, I just need to stay patient. And that's, that's the biggest thing is not get ahead of myself. Um, and play one shot at a time. It's the biggest cliche we got out here. So, um, you know, one shot at a time means a lot to us because we're not thinking ahead to the, like, oh, I need it. Uh, where's this flag? Or, you know, what am I going to do on 18? Or, you know, you just got to think about the next shot. That's the most important one. That's what my coach always preaches. So um, that's what I'm going to go do tomorrow. A couple of questions, uh, Robert. Did, did, uh, what, what club did you hit on four, for starters? Your second end of the uh, five. Driver five iron. Five iron. Um, and secondly, what kind of lie did you have and what was the issue on 18? Was it yeah. up against the bridge? Or? Yeah, it was right up against the bridge, kind of where the, the grass met the bridge and then it grew over the bridge and it was kind of at the bottom of the, the crest. So I kind of had to, I had to knife it out of that lie and catch part of the bridge and hopefully the ball caught part of the bridge and, and, hit, and bounced up and it's exactly what I'm going to hit it. If I hit it a millimeter fat, I'd break my wrist and I was really scared to even do that, I was even thinking about I might be topping this ball because I don't, you know, I don't want to have to take any grass. And I hit it perfect. Um, I clipped the ball probably about an eighth of an inch underneath the surface of the ball. So it was probably, it had a little smiley face on it afterwards, but I had to knife it up there. It was, it was kind of scary. Club was what? Pitching wedge at 152 yards. The ball, the first contact it made was with the bridge? Yeah, I mean, it, when, I hit, when I hit the ball, I kind of knifed it and it felt like the ball hit the bridge and kind of popped up in the air. It didn't look like it, I don't think it looked like it on TV, but I know that either my club or the ball hit the bridge. Um, this and then I'll hang up and listen, but what, did you have a lead at Memphis going into the last day? Yeah, I had a two shot lead. It was just two shot. Does it yeah. help at all that it's only one shot, which is pretty much next to nothing as opposed to a four shot lead or something yeah better. absolutely because i i know a lot of guys that have had four and five shot leads this year that have just gone out and didn't know how to handle it um i know how to handle it it's it's fun i mean this is what we this is what we live for having a one shot lead and playing good golf you know this is this is a blast and i'm very blessed to be in this position it's just uh you know i gotta go make birdies tomorrow i know i can't shoot even par and just expect to win the golf tournament so um i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be a lot of fun
Just on that uh, follow-up on that bridge shot, that was pretty fantastic. I was watching it there. Uh, you had the rules official out. What were you uh, looking for there? Well, since the bridge, they marked the bridge in the hazard instead of cutting the hazard lines to the edge of the bridge. So if you hit it on it, you could get relief. Instead, it was in the hazard, so I couldn't ground my club. I had the, um, the official test the ground for me because I couldn't test it because it was in a hazard. Um, to tell me if there was any bridge underneath my golf ball. And he said there was a little bit, but it was a couple inches ahead, so I was thinking, oh boy. Um, but luckily, I, I picked it perfect. Um, it came out, came out really nice. I thought it was almost going to get up to the green and have a birdie putt, but uh, you know, that was the issue. We were just trying to figure out you know, what my options were. And, you know, I wasn't going to take a drop. I, was, I hadn't made, a, I'd made one bogey all week, so I was, I was definitely going to hit the shot regardless of what happened. So. It was tough. I just had to trust it. I've been trusting it all week, and I wasn't going to flinch on that one. Um, you know, I've made so many good swings. Um, you know, the past few, three, four weeks, I finished fourth in Congressional and striped it. And I finished 25th last week or in uh, John Deere and absolutely striped it that week. I just didn't make anything. I got frustrated with my putting. Um, and this week, I just, you know, I've been hitting it so good, um, and I need to lean on that tomorrow because, you know, if I keep hitting it close and give myself chances, it's going to be a fun day. Robert, just uh, going, just going back to Memphis. How are you a different player since then? I'm, I'm not even close to the same player. Um, my fitness level is off the charts from where it used to be. Um, I rarely find myself sweating on the golf course, and if you remember Memphis, I was sweating like a pig. Um, and I just think I'm more mature. Um, and I'd actually like to know where I'm at on the 18th hole instead of just being an idiot and not knowing I'd have a three-shot lead. And, blowing it in the bushes to the right where I could have hit it. Um, and it's, it's just a completely different feeling from now from Memphis. Um, I hit so many, so many good shots in Memphis, and I had one bad hole. And that's what I took out of it. And I learned from it. And I was sitting on the 18th tee in, at Disney, looked at my caddy, I'm like, well, we got a three-shot lead. You know exactly what not to do, you know? And I kind of giggled it off and made par and won the golf tournament. And, uh, you know, that's my attitude. Um, my attitude's completely different. Um, I just, I like playing golf. I love being a professional. I like thanking the fans. I like thanking the volunteers, you know, because they come out to watch us on their dime. And, uh, you know, I'm very blessed. And I'm just, it's so much fun to be in this position. You know, it's, it's not, not very often you get in this position, but when you do, you got to cherish it. And that's, that's really what I'm doing. Just in some respects, is it fair to say that maybe what happened in Memphis is the best thing that's happened to you? 100%. You know, I could have I won that tournament and not known how to deal with the failure. Um, but I think winning a golf tournament outright, that would be easy. And what I had to do was hard. Um, just dealing with all that and having to man up and do the inter interview after we, afterwards and say, hey, I'm an idiot. I didn't know how to handle it. You know, and that's, uh, that really helped me in my career for sure. Obviously you're a power player and, but hitting a lot of th three irons off the tees this mm -hmm. week, but given all that, are you still surprised you made only one bogey in three rounds? Yeah, I am surprised. Um, I usually make a few here and there because I, I hit it crooked every once in a while, and I deal with that. I used to playing out of the trees, and I've been playing out of the fairways, and every time I've hit in the rough this week, I've had a really good lie, and that's what has to happen uh, to be in my position. I, you know, if I hit it in the rough today and I had some bad lies, I wouldn't have been able to control the ball like I did. So. Um, you know, it is kind of surprising, but you know, the, my golf in the past few months has been uh, exciting for me just because I've been striping it, and you know, hopefully I do that tomorrow. I'm, I got the same you know, swing keys as I have all week, just kind of relaxed hands and turn and turn. It's just, it's been a lot of fun. You know, that's, uh, that's all I've been thinking about, and you know, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty nice so far. Let's take two more right here. Doug put out a tweet about this earlier. You just referenced it as well. How is it you're under the pressure of leading a golf tournament the way you are today, and yet you still have the time to go up and thank volunteers? I find that absolutely, in this day and age, with the kind of a, the new breed of golfer out there, new, new breed of player, I find that refreshing and pretty compelling. Well, you know, I've been doing it for seven years, um, and nobody, I don't look for the, the accolades of you know, thanking volunteers, but every single time I thank one, they come to me the next year, and they said, you were the only guy to thank me that week. 
and I, it, it makes me feel good to just to say it. You know, I like to do it after I make a bogey or a double just to give somebody some gratitude to kind of just kind of get your mind off of things as well. Um, you know, I thank the volunteers I, as much as I can. You know, it's hard when I'm in, you know, super focused and I'm, I've got my, my head down and I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about something. But uh, if I see one, if I make on, eye contact with a, a volunteer, I always thank them. And I thank the fans for coming out. I mean, like I said, that's on their dime. And, you know, the, we need the fans. We need the volunteers. We need the sponsors. And a lot of guys out here don't lean that way um, to thank the volunteers. And I've, I've had hundreds of volunteers come up to me and say thanks for saying thank you. And that, you know, that means a lot. Robert, thank you very much for coming in. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.